Hey guys, I'm here with Mac. We're actually on our way to Ohio. We've got a little road trip happening today. It's about a 10-ish hour drive and we're going there for a very exciting reason. a two-day live fire class put on by Active Self Protection. So if you follow my channel already, you've probably heard us talk about Active Self Protection. It's one of my favorite YouTube channels, maybe one of yours. Oh, John does a great job. I we, use it at work all the time for all of my people. Active Self Protection is a channel on YouTube where John Korea shows different use of force videos and they're actual things that have happened um, that have been caught on camera. And then he breaks them down and talks about what was correct in the video, what you should learn from the video. There's just a lot of good lessons in his videos. So the class we're going to on Saturday tomorrow is the evidence-based handgun skills and Sunday is evidence-based handgun skills 2.0 in case you guys like what you see in this video and you want to take that class as well. Stay tuned and we'll be filming as much of this weekend as we can and we're really excited. everybody we obviously made it to our hotel as you can see and it's morning now we're gonna go have breakfast and then we're gonna head to the class they have a simple breakfast because of COVID <laughs> so he's got some French toast and an oatmeal that he hasn't mixed yet and I've got a Western omelet with some sausage and an apple I was just telling Mac how every time I'm gonna take a class I get a little nervous and I'm afraid that I'm gonna be like unprepared and forget something or like mess up. And he doesn't experience that, but I do. <laughs> so if you've never taken a live fire class or you have and you get nervous, one tip that I think is really important is to always make sure you read the description of the class so that you know exactly what you need to bring. Cause I've seen a lot of students forget things, even like their gun yep. or know that they need to bring a holster. So make sure you read it over a few times and make sure that you have everything you're gonna need for the class that day and that'll make you feel a little bit better and more prepared. It was actually supposed to rain today and I'm glad it's it's not. The rain's, oh, that sun's really blinding. <laughs> There's no rain in the forecast anymore so that's pretty exciting. It's a little cloudy. It's about 50 degrees. It's supposed to go up like to 60 so that'll be nice. I'm actually wearing my Alexo leggings that I reviewed and I told you guys I'd be wearing them in a class. So I'm gonna try them out today. Sorry, there's an obnoxious person on a motorcycle. I'll be wearing them today and hopefully we'll get some filming on the range so you can see what the class is like. I'm excited because I've been watching active self-protection videos for years. Like even before I met Mac, I would watch these videos and I thought the channel was awesome. So to be going to one of his classes now is really cool and I'm just really grateful because they invited me to come and it just it's a really really great opportunity and I feel very blessed. So I'm gonna try my best and I'll try to make you guys proud and not embarrass Mac. 
And ladies out there, I know it can be really intimidating to take a live fire class because you go in it knowing that there's either gonna be no other females there or maybe one maybe two. So I know it can be scary, but it's so important to train with your gun in a live fire class type situation. One, because I think the nerves are good. Like having other people that you're performing in front of can add just a little bit of stress, which I think is important for knowing how to handle your gun and practicing your muscle memory and everything to ignore that stress and just be able to perform. So live fire is really important, classes are important, so try to get over the nerves and the fear and just do it, just sign up for a class. That's my challenge to you this year, sign up for at least one live fire class if you've never taken one before and if you have, sign up for one anyway because it's good to keep up your training. Let me let Mac in the vehicle. If I have a sympathetic squeeze or a problem, something happens, I get pushed over, I can very easily get on the trigger here. If I'm up here and I do that, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. You're gonna hear those words from me all the time. Shooter, safely, carefully, reluctantly holster. I will tell you, take a, deep, take a big deep breath. You know what that does? That divorces what I'm about to do from what I just did. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, you're clear. Go ahead and take the uh, last you up. Very good. Thank you, sir. Okay. We just did an assessment to see what our baseline is, so I'll include pictures of our scores somewhere in here so that you guys can see it. He did better than me. He did amazing. I did okay. But tomorrow we'll see what our scores are after we improve. We're breaking for lunch now. Panera! We've got an hour long break and then we're gonna go do some more shooting. Because I've got the trigger resetting as I go. Make sense? That will come in handy later today when we start transitioning from dot to dot. Okay, the class is over now. We're back in our room. One other thing that's really good about live fire classes is that you can see what you do and don't like about the gear that you use. So I'll show you guys how I was running the class today. Okay, I'm wearing the Alexo Athletica leggings that I recently reviewed, which worked great. The pockets hold so much. I was able to carry all my magazines, my phone, my pepper spray, my knife, everything. But the issue that I had was this holster, my crossbreed, which I normally really like, but it might be the combination with this belt and these pants, it just didn't work well. And I'll show you what the problem was. So when I went to draw my gun a bunch of times, this whole thing would move up and it just really kept screwing me up. And a couple times the whole holster came out, like, like something like this happened. So tomorrow I will not be using this holster. I'm gonna switch to this holster by Ultimate Holsters. This one attaches to the fabric of my pants. So I won't have any issues with it coming off at all. This one's a lot more secure than the crossbreed was with this belt pants combination. So this one, like, it's not gonna go anywhere. So that's what I'll be using tomorrow. We'll see if that, if that works better. I'm predicting that it will. So that's by Ultimate Holsters. Good morning, everyone. It's day two of our training, and I was just telling Mac that I don't feel as nervous today, and I think that's because I know what to expect now after being in the class yesterday. I know where everything is. I know what the place looks like. I know who the instructors are. <laughs> it's just, I'm, I'm not nervous now. But I did want to talk a little bit about my holster situation because I showed you guys last night what my problem was and that my holster wasn't really working. Something that you should be aware of when you're going to take a live fire class is that they might not allow you to use the holster that you normally carry in. So you guys know I carry in belly bands and corset holsters and things that don't require a belt most of the time. And for this class, you need to use something that mounts on a belt, like a belt mounted holster, and one that doesn't collapse in on itself when you draw the gun. So those are my least favorite holsters because they just don't really work well with my body type. And I feel like one of the issues I'm having is that my torso is so short that it really, when I carry in a holster like that, because a belly band I can carry lower on my hips, but when I carry in a holster like that, it brings the gun way up and it's just a slower draw for me. So it's just something to note about classes. You might not be able to run the class in a holster that you are used to or normally carry in. So that's causing me a bit of trouble. I wouldn't say trouble. It's just making me a little slower than I'd like to be. But if you're in a situation like that, just run the class the way the instructor 
tells you or wants you to like use whatever gear they want you to use and it's usually for safety reasons because they're running a line of however many people so they have to have certain rules in place for that type of situation but just take whatever knowledge you learn from the class and then apply it in your own time when you're using the holster that you usually carry in so I'm learning a lot in this class I'll take all the knowledge I gather this weekend and then take it home with me, put my holsters on, like the ones that I normally carry in, and apply what I learned this weekend to my carry style. It's a little bit colder today, so I'm not too excited about that, but I've brought my layers. I think I have gloves somewhere in here, so it should be fun. Then the gun goes off, hopefully does this thing, rather than, <laughs> if it didn't, guess what I need to work on? My grip. So on day two, we really started focusing on shortening the time between our draw to the first shot. And John taught us this really cool drill where you count one Chicago, two Chicago, three Chicago, four Chicago, five Chicago. And throughout that whole process, you're drawing the gun out and bringing it up and dry firing. So it should take you five Chicago's to get to that step. And then we went down to four Chicago's, three Chicago's, two Chicago's, one Chicago to bring your draw to fire time down to two seconds or under, which was really cool and a very interesting technique that I had never learned before. And we really focused on relaxing our body and taking out any unnecessary movements from the draw. So in this next clip, I'm gonna show you how one of the instructors, Neil, who was awesome, thank you, Neil, was demoing a drill for us. And that's another thing that you should look for in a class and a good instructor is demos. If an instructor is not demoing the drills, to me, that kind of shows that either they aren't very capable or they don't really have that much experience because they should always be demoing the drills in my opinion. I just think that that makes for a better class and it just kind of shows that they know what they're doing in my opinion. And it also helps you to know exactly what you're supposed to do when you see someone else do it and then you do it. You guys are gonna do it four times, he's just gonna demo it once. Shooter, you're released to your test. So towards the middle of the second day, we shot the assessment again, which was cool because you get to see how you've progressed based on what you learned the first day and a half. Turns out that Mac got the second highest score they've ever seen in their classes. So I was really, really proud of him. I knew he'd do great because he's just amazing, but he did really, really well. And not only was he a great shooter, but he was really helpful to the other students, which is always something that's really nice to see in the class. Right, here we go. Go and fire one to the body. You ready? Stand by. You don't get to look yet. I was looking at that. Safely. That was a one nine. Shoot it ready? Same thing. Stand by. Let it do. That's an old. You're okay. Okay. That's on the line. You're fine. Go and fire two to the head. Shoot it ready? Stand by. I actually did a lot better than I thought I was. I thought I was going to fumble or miss something, but I didn't miss any of my shots. I was not as fast as Mac. He's just like lightning fast. I, I'm just super impressed with the shooting. But I didn't miss any of my shots and I was safe, so that was really exciting. And I improved my score. Okay. All right. Sec same thing, draw and fire one shot. So you ready? Yeah. Stand by. All right, man, we're going to draw and fire two to the head. Two to the head. Stand by. All 
All right, Sam, draw fire. Six to the body. Six to the body. Stand by. Ready to go? Yeah. Okay, I got some more bragging to do. <laughs> All right, Miss Stab went from a two-two-four on her draw to first shot to a one-four-six. That's a professional standard. Give her a hand. So I'm gonna show you how he did right now. Here is his pre, you can see, and his post scores. So you can see how much he improved. So he went from a seventy point one seven to a 96.01, which is amazing. So I'll post mine now. I went from a 51.53 to a 69.06, .06, which I was super proud of because that was almost max pre-score the first day we took the assessment. And he's just, he's just amazing anyway. So the fact that I got close to that score, I was pretty happy with that. So after that, Mac and I actually got to shoot some videos with Neil for the Active Self Protection Extra channel, which is another channel that you guys should be subscribed to. They post a lot of good stuff on that that will improve your training. And so I got to film a couple of videos for the Extra channel and then Mac got to film one as well. So that was pretty cool that we got to be on that channel. So go subscribe to that channel and keep an eye out for our videos. One of mine came out already for their Suck Less Saturday series and there should be two more coming out from us, so keep an eye out for those. I don't know why it's so exciting. This is where Duct Tape Headquarters is in Avon, Ohio. Look at that, Duct Tape. It's a big deal. World, it's the World Headquarters. 21st anniversary. The lessons I have for you guys for when you take live fire classes. One is be a good student. Be open to learning things. I would not recommend going into a class thinking that you know everything because that will just make it harder for you and for the instructor. So be open-minded and be a good student. Take a lot of notes when you can. Another thing is to be helpful and encouraging to other students because if you're nervous, chances are there's another student who's nervous as well. And I've, you know, whenever there's another lady in the class, I kind of try to like, hey, I'm here too, you know, we're here together. And just help out and give her encouragement because especially like being one of the only females, I know that that can be a little scary. So just be encouraging and helpful to other students around you without being like, without being like super critical, just be helpful. That just always makes for a better class when students are encouraging and helping each other. And we had a really great group of students at this class. And lastly, be safe. As long as you're safe and you're following the safety rules, not rushing and doing things as fast as you can do things safely. So you don't need to be super fast, but you do need to be super safe. So make sure you're following all the safety rules. And even if you're like an expert shooter, generally when you take a class like this, even if it's more of like a beginner's class and you think you already know all this stuff, you'll usually come out of it with at least one new piece of information. So just be open-minded. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was so cool getting to go to Ohio and meet John and his team. And Mac and I are just really thankful to be able to go to that class and share it with all of you. So if you haven't followed Active Self Protection's channel yet, make sure you go subscribe and to their extra channel. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe here as well. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.